Marriage is a lot of things to so many people. But being married for seven years myself, yes, seven years and counting, I can only tell you just one thing, that marriage is all about compromise. That's it. And in this video, I'm going to share with you five basic ways you can compromise in your marriage in order to have a smooth and fulfilling relationship. Hello my friends, welcome back to the channel again. If you're new here, my name is Wendy Zill and in today's video I'm talking about marriage and compromise. If this is something that resonates with you, definitely watch to the very end because number five is a game changer. So without further ado, let's get started. We all know that communication is one of the basic things that guarantees the success of every relationship. This is even beyond marriage, like every relationship you can think about, whether it's a relationship between a boss and a subordinate, among siblings, among family members, you know, just name it, communication is very, very key. And so is it in marriage. In fact, it's even more important in marriage because marriage is a combination of two people who are from different backgrounds, different lineage, sometimes even different tribe and languages coming together and saying, yes, we got this, we want to live together, we want to have this life together and if you're able to communicate effectively in marriage trust me you have actually solved 70 percent of your problems and how can you compromise in the area of communication this is a very important question because you know we are different individuals just as our faces are different that's how our temperaments are different our behaviors are different our personalities are different so when it comes to communication some people are very introverted some people are highly extroverted so when you decide to go into marriage you should be able to compromise in the area of communication in the sense that if you're someone that is very quiet like you're very introverted and then you marry someone who is highly extroverted you should be able to like shift ground a little bit and say okay baby you know i don't like to talk so much but i got you you can actually talk to me even when you're tired you don't want to hear any talk accommodate the other person let's take this scenario for example someone who is highly introverted you are the quiet type and then you marry a woman who is extroverted like she's always talking she wants to talk highly expressive and all of that you just have to listen sometimes why because she is your wife and you're willing to love her you're willing to understand her you're willing to give her room to be herself and to express herself you see in doing that you're already compromising because ordinarily your normal self you just want to be on your bed or be on your couch and just press your phone or do your thing now or maybe just watch your movie and you don't like plenty talk but you see now you have to listen to your wife you come back from work and she goes on and on my day was this i went to this i went to this place. you know all of that that is compromise and once a man learns how to do that trust me like i said 70 percent of your problem Otilo, <laughs> kindly support my channel by liking this video and subscribing if you have not done so yet. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me. God bless you. So number two is respect. In marriage, you should be able to compromise in the area of respect as well. Now, we all know how men naturally love to be respected especially by their wives even the bible commands wives to respect their husband that is why the bible says submit to your own husband submission is all about respecting your man and acknowledging the fact that he is your man and he is actually the head of the family if you're a lady for example and you're working in an office where you're actually the boss you know everybody's like yes ma'am yes ma'am you know you give others coming back home you are not going to come back home as the boss. This sounds somehow, but it's just the truth. In fact, the moment you leave your car, before you get into that building that is your house, you drop the whole boss thing outside. When you come into the house, you're coming into the house as a wife, as a mom, if you have children, as a confidant to your husband, as a friend to your husband. So you don't expect to come into your home, into your marriage, and still be treated like the boss that you are in the office. You're coming back into the home as a wife and you're willing to submit to your husband regardless of your status in the office. And this also applies to the man. You're highly, highly placed in your area of specialization. You're the boss. Everybody calls you, yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. You shouldn't come back home as the boss. You come back home as a father, as a husband to your darling wife, as a friend to your children. 
Because if you bring in the boss thing into your family, you're going to have an environment that is tensed. Your wife is scared of you. She doesn't, she can't talk to you. She can't feel so free around you because she doesn't know if you're going to snap the next minute. Because you know you're already the boss and you expect that boss treatment even in your own home. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to expect the boss treatment. What I'm saying here is your ability to compromise in this area is going to go a long way in helping your relationship. All right. So when you come back home, you come back home as a loving husband. You drop the whole boss thing in the office. Let it be. Let it be. You come back home as a loving husband. You love your wife. You cuddle your wife. You love your children. You bring them close to you. Growing up, my dad was not much of a disciplinarian. The discipline thing was actually my mother's duty. She was the one that would discipline us and all of that. But I know this family that when the daddy is coming back home, in fact, before his car, get to the gate or sometimes once they hear pom 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 once they hear that horn oh my goodness everybody is running like everybody is running to comport yourself to you know to just put yourself in order because once it comes and he sees anything that is not in order from any slag bass bulls you know so you see, in that kind of environment, there is tension. Children are not free to be themselves. And there's something I've learned about children. In my few years of being a mom, my daughter is five years now, and I could actually tell that when an environment is not tensed, children are more likely to feel free to express themselves and even communicate with you. Okay, when you're always, you know, uptight and they can't look at you, your face is always like, mm, mm. They won't feel free to tell you anything. And if there's anything going on, they might not tell you, you might not know. So the take here is being able to compromise, come back home and come back home as a father, as a husband, as a wife, so that everything, the elements in that house, everything is going to be so conducive such that there is no tension. Children are free and happy. The wife is free and happy. And that is one big step to having a fulfilling relationship. When it comes to appreciation, a lot of husbands, especially our African men, Nigerian men especially, yes. Some of you, if you say, tell your wife you love her, you'll be like, eh, she don't know say I love her. If I don't love her, will I marry her? Will I be doing all the things I do? Will I be working so hard to provide for her and the family? If I don't love her, will I do all of these things? Yes, she knows you love her, but she also wants you to say it. Say you love your wife. Women are moved by what they hear, not necessarily by what they see, but what they hear. Yeah, she's seeing you doing all of these things, you know, providing for the family, and she absolutely appreciates it. But she also appreciates you more when you tell her you love her. Tell her all the sweet things. Tell her she's beautiful. Ooh. Your wife dresses up and she's looking all gorgeous and she's going out. You should be the first to tell her she's beautiful. Don't don't allow some random guy out there be the first to tell your wife she is beautiful. Be the first to look at your wife. Baby, you look gorgeous. I love you. I appreciate you. I have never seen a woman that is highly appreciated verbally in her marriage who is not happy. Even when there is no money in that relationship, she's happy. She's hearing the right things. You're telling her the right things. You don't bust her brain. <laughs> you understand? And this also applies to the wife. As a lady, you should also be able to appreciate your husband. When he gets a haircut, hey baby, you look cute. When he dresses in a certain way, hey baby, you look cute. Even when he does the little, little things he does in the house, you should be able to appreciate him by just getting the groceries, bread, milk, and all of those things, by helping the kids with their homework sometimes, by dropping the kids off at school sometimes. Don't be feeling entitled like, hey, if he doesn't help me, does he want to kill me? Does he want to kill me in this house with housework? Can't you see all of the things I'm doing? If he tries to help from time to time, appreciate him. You don't know. Appreciate him. I'm telling you he's going to do more for you. But when you don't appreciate him, he doesn't even know if you appreciate it or not. So sometimes he'll just choose not to do anything. So appreciate that man. I have never seen a man that is highly appreciated that is not happy. I mean, I think it's one in hundred or maybe one in one thousand. They are always happy. Like, ah, oh, my wife likes this thing. I will do it again. The moment you start appreciating each other, the more you're going to build a stronger bond and you have a more fulfilling relationship. And that takes me to number four, which is prayer. Prayer is very, very important in a marriage relationship. In fact, the importance of prayer can never be overemphasized. As a man, as a husband in that household, you are the priest of the household. 
it is expected of you to take the leadership position when it comes to prayer and everything, especially prayer, because you're the defender of that family. It is your surname name that everybody uses in the family. So you're the defender of that family. You're the priest of that family. You should be able to take up that mantle and hold it firm and defend your, your family physically and even spiritually. Don't be the type that when you go to work, you come back at night, you just sleep and you forget everything and you're like, oh, this prayer, prayer thing, please, I don't believe in all of these things. Just do the right thing and the universe will reward you somehow. Life is more spiritual than physical. The day I realized this, was a day my life completely changed. I also used to think that, eh, you know, all this spiritual thing, all this over spiritual, spirit, cocoa spirit, cocoa things, no, eh, just do the right thing and the universe. Life is more spiritual. Most of the battles you fight in the physical have already been fought in the spiritual. And if you lose spiritually, there's every likelihood that you're going to lose physically. Let me not sound so deep, but basically what I'm saying is, as a man, you should be able to bring your family together, pray with your family, pray for them, pray for your wife, pray for your wife especially, pray for your children. Okay, so when you do these things, you know, naturally, if you pray for your wife and she sees that you pray for her and you pray for the children, she's going to feel very, very secured. She's going to feel very, very safe. And she's going to have a lot of trust in you. Not because you're God, but because she believes that this man is there for us. Physically, he's there for us, providing for us, making us feel very comfortable in this family. And then spiritually, he's there for us, interceding on our behalf. She's going to appreciate you the more. So prayer is very important. It's not just about the man alone, but I'm dwelling a little bit on the man here because I know that a lot of men don't like to pray or they don't like to take spiritual things seriously. Women are more prone to take spiritual things seriously. That's why you go to many churches today, you see more women than you see men. <laughs> Most churches, especially in Nigeria, before you see count 10 men, you would have counted like 50, 60, 70 women. I'm telling you facts. Some men don't go to church because they're always like, hey, this church, church things are big. Now you go give me food, you know, things like that. But at the end of the day, prayer is very, very important. So like I said, it's not just about the man alone. Even you as a woman, even though I know that women are naturally more prone to loving God and being close to God and realizing that there's a supreme being up there, there are also women who don't pray or are not so spiritually inclined, so to speak. Okay, so if you're one of them, start today start praying there is actually a supreme being up there that sees everything he's the owner of everything and makes everything work so you need to connect to god you need to connect to the owner of the universe so that you can also have a very good marriage it's very important because life can be challenging sometimes and when push comes to shove your result is going to be prayer all right, so prayer is very, very important. And this takes me to my last point. And this one is a game changer, like I said, and that is forgiveness. And when it comes to forgiveness, honestly, as human beings, there are times that people will piss you off. Okay, someone just pisses you off, maybe in your place of work or in the neighborhood or something. And you just, you know, in your mind, you make up your mind that this person, I'm not going to have anything to do with this person anymore. But you see, when it comes to marriage, <laughs> it's a different thing altogether. In the sense that you don't have a choice than to forgive your spouse. So if you're in a marriage relationship and you are not forgiving your spouse or you've, or you've not forgiven your spouse for what they did to you, then you're making a huge, huge mistake. Because it's like hurting yourself. Why did I say so? Now in marriage, two becomes one. So this is like you not forgiving yourself. I'll take myself for example. Before I got married, okay, I am the type of person that when you offend me, I tend to take it so personal, you know, I'll look at it, think about it, and I'll be like, ah, this person, I don't go follow her talk again. Nothing will join us. You know, I just cut you off. I cut you off on every level. And then when I got married, <laughs> it was a challenge for me in the initial stage because I found it difficult to forgive when my husband offends me i tend to hold on to it for longer period of time and you know i kept holding on and holding on to these things until i stumbled across one video on youtube i can't remember this channel name anymore but what i could remember was what that lady was saying and that was like an eye opener for me and that was when i realized that you just have to forgive your spouse in a marriage relationship you don't have a choice 
This is not even about being spiritual or anything. This is about you, it's about your happiness, and it's about your well-being. Because not forgiving someone is like drinking poison and then expecting the other person to die. It's not possible. If you drink poison, now you go die. <laughs> you understand? So this one, I'm telling you from my own personal experience, forgiveness is key. I don't care what anybody wants to say about this point. Like... This is the biggest of them all. Forgiveness is key. For me, I can tell you right now that I actually forgive my husband in advance. It's not as if he doesn't offend me. He's a human being, of course. I also offend him too. But for me, when he offends me, I'm going to get angry, yes, as a human being. I'm going to get emotional, yes, as a human being. I am still human. It doesn't being having this understanding doesn't take away the human emotion from me. I'm going to get angry. I'm going to get emotional. I'm going to react, but I'll also forgive. In fact, I'll forgive in advance. Honestly, this is like everything. Now, I'm going to give an exception here. There are relationships where a wife is being battered or being brutalized or being scared for her life every now and then, or a relationship that is highly, highly toxic, that is abusive. She's scared for her life. If you're in that kind of situation, all you need to do is get out first. Be alive first before any other thing. That's a different thing entirely. But if it's just normal marriage relationship where, you know, every now and then you have disagreements, like, for example, you tell him, please, when you're coming back from work, branch to that spot, that place, and buy me that cold stone ice cream. And maybe you're pregnant and you're actually craving that ice cream. And it's a, like, it's long way from your home to that place. But he's going to pass through that place when he's coming back from the office. And then you beg him, please buy it for me. And then he comes home. The next thing he says, oh, I forgot. Now, as a pregnant lady who was craving and all of that, I'm sure you're going to react. You know, things like this, you're going to react, you're going to get angry, and you're going to say things like, you don't care about me, you don't care about how I'm feeling, and you know I'm carrying your child, you know, all of those things, but you're still going to forgive him. You're not going to hold on to that thing and hold it on to the next day, and to the day after, and to the day after. No. Because one thing I understand about marriage is that offenses would abound. Offenses will come. But when they come... You talk about it, you have an understanding, and you move on. Holding on to it or holding on to grudges is going to completely destroy your marriage. It's going to completely destroy your relationship and the trust you have for each other. So the best thing you can do is forgive and move on. Let me give another scenario. For example, you're a wife and your husband cheats on you and ordinarily you're supposed to walk away from that relationship. But with counseling and everything, you decided to stay so it means that you decided to forgive him, right? Now you decided to forgive him and stay, but you're not acting like you have forgiven him. Every now and then you call up past things that have happened in the past. If there's a disagreement, you call up the things that have happened before, you bring it back into the disagreement and everything becomes, everything goes haywire. Now that is not proper. If you are forgiving him, then you should never bring the past event up again. I also used to do that in my relationship. Like the first two years was crazy. I also used to do that a lot. Like when we have disagreement and next thing I'm like, hey, that's how the other time you did this, you did that. So at some point we had an agreement. My husband and I actually had an agreement and he said to me, I don't like it when you bring up past events. When things happen, the next thing you're calling up things that happened one year ago, six months ago, three months ago. I mean... If you have forgiven me, let it stay in the past. If you're bringing it up, that means you have not forgiven me. You know, he was saying those things to me that day and he actually got to me and I sat down. I did a lot of work on myself, on my mental state. And then I realized that actually he's right. If you're forgiving someone for doing something to you, then you shouldn't be bringing it up again. That should be forgotten and left in the past. All right. So you just forge ahead and move on with your life. So forgiveness is very, very, very important. No marriage is perfect. We all struggle in one way or the other. And one thing you should definitely avoid is comparison. Like they say, the grass is not always greener in the other compound. When you look at it from afar, it seems as if it's greener. But when you go close, you realize that some have you no know, yellow patches and you know light brown patches here and there is not perfect. So take what you have 
cherish what you have apply these things i have told you and your marriage is going to change for the better it happened to me and i believe it's going to be of help to you if you follow these things i have shared in this video thank you so much for watching don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you have not done so yet also let's have your contribution in the comments i'd love 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 to read from you let's get insight from you you might be helping someone out there you never can tell some people come to the comment section to see if there are valuable advice they can take on all right so if you have experience in these things drop a comment also check out the videos on the screen and i'll see you there